what was I thinking? Uh, Uh, okay, so first of all, um, I, I tried to really do my homework to make this talk good. Uh, I tried to really think about it, you know, I started thinking about it way, way in advance. Um, I submitted five talk proposals. This was the one I was like, not hoping, I was both hoping it was and wasn't going to get selected because it's such a, an interesting and, and distinct challenge. Uh, <laughs> the, the, this is sort of a long tradition now, right, of sucks talks uh, at DjangoCon. Um, and I, I watched all of the existing sucks talks and a couple sort of pieces of related material uh, in advance, and I just want to go over those really quick. So uh, there was uh, Why I Hate Django by Cal Henderson, um, and that one was sort of more facetious, um, but, but still I thought it had, um, it, 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 you know, it kind of started, started the trajectory. Um, then Why Django Sucks from Eric Florenzano, and then last year, Glyph Lefkowitz gave us uh, Why Django Hates Python, and Steve Holden, uh, Why the Django Documentation Sucks. Uh, and, uh, and then at PyCon uh, this year, our keynote chair, in fact, Karen Rustad, uh, had a wonderful presentation about uh, the, sort of the cognitive implications of the beginner's mind vis-a-vis -vis the Django tutorial. Um, so, you know, maybe, you know, if you're watching this online, uh, feel free to pause and go and watch those uh, five videos. I think those are, um, you know, I, I, I'm considering sort of an import star against all of those videos at the beginning of the presentation here, right? Um, so I, I, I do a fair amount of conference speaking. I'm not new to the world of conference speaking. Uh, I'm new to the world of speaking at software development conferences, uh, and I, I'm sort of a, a very much a newcomer to your community. Uh, and so that's one of the main reasons that uh, this has been difficult for me to put together. Uh, it, it, really fun, though. It's been a difficulty, um, but it's, it's been a challenge that I've tried to, to meet. Um, when, I try, when, I, when I told people I was giving this talk and asked for advice for a number of people, uh, there was one piece of advice that was by far the most. People were like, well, you have to. Anybody know what? When I said, I'm going to do a talk called Why the Django Community Sucks. Anybody know what people told me? It's, you have to. Provide a solution, that's true, have polls. Uh, no, yeah, people said, uh, make it funny was the thing people said, right? If it's funny, people will digest it more easily. Um, and, you know, I thought, a lot of people gave that advice. I thought about it for a long time, and I decided against that. I thought that that would be an easy way out, um, and I decided, you know, I don't want this to be a joking talk. I want to actually try to uh, not pull any punches and actually really, um, you know, really say some things that are going to make people uncomfortable, say some things that they don't expect to hear at a Django Con, and, uh, and, and do it in a way that is serious. And I think that my experience with the Django community is that, uh, you know, y you can take it. Um, that, you know, I, I think that you, you're, you're readily able to absorb it. Uh, another element of difficulty is that I think that a lot of what, I, a lot of what sucks about the Django community, it doesn't suck about the Django community per se, but actually sucks about open source generally. And I thought that I'd be able to sort of um, sand down the content in such a way that it'd be distinctly relevant for Django, and I wasn't really able to do that in most cases. So a lot of what I'm going to talk about, I think, is sort of um, uh, transposable across uh, open source generally, I think, if, in my experience. Uh, I also, as a matter of personal practice, I don't use the words should, would, or could um, in, in my daily language, so that also made it very difficult, right, to give a talk about something that sucks without using those words added to the difficulty. Uh, I also decided early on not to use a slide deck. Um, I, you know, wanted sort of the aesthetic to be right here um, in the room and to be uh, sort of very verbal. And I'd also, in, in that vein, I'd just like to invite people, I know a lot of you have really important business, but I'd just like to invite people to maybe close your laptops if, if you know, if you would. I'm, I'm not, I, like I said, I'm not have, doing any visuals and I'd like to really engage with words. Um, if you have serious stuff you have to take care of, you know, I understand. Um, and then the final thing uh, that made it difficult is that I could not find, searching high and low, a video of a speaker standing on a stage at a podium telling the audience, you suck. Not at any conference could I find this. Uh, and um, so when I say, you know, so you suck, right? So when I say that, who, who is the audience? That's important at any talk like this to kind of uh, figure that out. 
Uh, and I want to say right up front, make it clear that any action that I'm advocating be taken, I'm not advocating, say, that the DSF take that action, right? I understand that the, the Django Software Foundation has a distinct mission. It's a, a 501c3 and has certain constraints, right? So this is about the Django community and not about the institutions, the core team, the DSF, uh, and so on. Um, uh, at the end of the talk, I'd like to invite people, if there are any questions that you think I can answer, maybe that's true. Um, I'm not sure that I'm qualified. To, maybe I am, maybe I'm not. Um, but I do want to invite people uh, to uh, pledge uh, a bit of action uh, at the end. Say uh, uh, sort of a pithy 30 second um, remark beginning with the word I and uh, tell us what it is that you will do uh, about some of these things. Um, so th three more little elements, and then I'll get into the things that suck. Uh, one, uh, there's, I just want to go over the, what I perceive as the most likely critiques to what I'm going to say. Um, one, of them, the, 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 one of them is that, uh, so uh, in order to talk about why the Django community sucks, I think it's necessary to talk about privilege and underprivileged communities. Uh, I happen to be, uh, you know, a, a white, heterosexual, middle-class male in my 20s. Um, I'm born totally, totally of privilege. Uh, so I, I may attempt to um, channel a certain amount of empathy and, and sort of uh, think about the, the, the mindset that, that an underprivileged member of an underprivileged community might have, um, but, but that's a limitation. I recognize that I can never know what it's like to be someone who doesn't come from the privilege that I do. Uh, I also want to point out that some of the things that I say might simply be wrong. I'm new here, right? Uh, if the things that I say are wrong, um, I think it, if there are things that I say that are flat out wrong, uh, I think it'll be interesting to I examine why someone who's new to the community had a belief that's inconsistent with, uh, with the, you know, with the reality. Uh, another perceived critique is I, I imagine people are going to say th something like, why is this being talked about at DjangoCon? I'm, I'm sure we're going to get that, get your, get your Twitters ready. Uh, and then, um, also, maybe that the target is too broad, that I'm targeting, uh, you know, sort of the sociological components are, are beyond Django and that this is a problem throughout society. Maybe. Maybe all those four critiques are true. Um, now I want to just go into some quick definitions um, uh, that I think are sort of important to talk about so that we can be on, on one page talking about the things that suck. Uh, I use the word radical a lot. I think of myself as radical. I think uh, of radical as a political and a mathematical term, both meaning the same thing. Um, from a political perspective, radical is still a mathematical operation, meaning you know, seeking the root. And uh, when I use the word radical, uh, radical movement, I'm talking about a movement that's looking for the, the root of uh, a, a, an issue or problem or phenomenon. Um, you know, when I talk about underprivileged, underprivileged communities, I'm, you know, talking about people who don't enjoy white male privilege. I hope that we all have a sense of, uh, of what that is and how that works. The vast majority of us benefit from it. Um, I like the phrase information age. I use that phrase a lot. I know a lot of us do. I'm not particularly a futurist, but when I talk about the information age, I'm talking about a, uh, perhaps a revolutionary time uh, that is uh, akin to the changes in the agricultural or industrial revolution. That time is happening right now. I think that the information age is a, a renaissance time, uh, which among other things means that I think that people who are uh, seeking gainful employment in the information age are likely to have more than one or more than two occupations. Uh, okay, the last little thing that I have before we get to the thing that sucks is I want to just ask a few questions, get people in the habit of raising their hands or not, or, or not raising their hands. Um, my first question is, can Johnny learn to program? Maybe you've read these articles, Johnny can, Johnny can't learn to program. Uh, so the question is, I I is it true uh, that anyone can learn to program? Maybe, maybe not anyone, uh, but, but is, it tr is it the case that generally people from a wide array of backgrounds can learn to program? Or, and I'll have you raise your hand, raise your hand if you think that people have a sort of innate knowledge. There's some people who are kind of born programmers. They, that's part of who they are. Um, it's, part of, it's part of their distinct, deep part of their personality. Who, who believes that? I see no hands. Maybe one. Maybe one or two. Yeah. Very few hands. Very few people. So it seems like most people seem, most people in the room seem to believe that, um, and, and how many people, how many people sort of, don't, how many people think Johnny can learn to program? Sort of that, that people who are not, okay, and, and so to that almost everyone raises their hand, right? So we're, we're, we're in a community, in an audience here, people who believe that um, 
that pe people can learn to program. Uh, not everyone, you know, just because you're not self-taught uh, to write PHP by the time you're 13 and then hate it by the time you're 14 doesn't mean that you can't learn to program, right? <laughs> oh, I said I wasn't gonna be funny. Uh, all right. Um, my next question is, uh, how many people think of the act of contributing to an open source project as, a, as activism? How many in the room? Well, surprisingly, only uh, looks like about 15 or 20 percent, if that. Um, and how many think that activism and uh, con contribution to open source projects are pretty distinctly separated? Okay, and then, so another similar amount, 20%, and I take it the rest are sort of somewhere in the middle on, on that spectrum, great. Um, next question is, how many people think of themselves as programmers in the room? How many are programmers? Okay, mo almost, yeah, almost all, some 80, in the 80s percent. Um, it, it, how many people think of, it, it, so programmer for you is sort of the, either the first or second hat that you wear? Hands up again, if it's like your main thing or your second thing. Yeah, okay, pretty much the same, same amount. So it looks like most people who think of themselves as programmers also think that that's their main thing, great. Okay, uh, all right, those will be relevant later, um, and that's kind of educational for me. So here is the list of things that I think suck. Uh, first, um, I find that you use the word technical when what you mean is acclimated. You use technical when what you mean is acclimated. Uh, so can, can Johnny program? Well, if, if Johnny can in fact learn to program, um, then I'm not sure what the distinction is in saying that some content is technical and other content is, is non-technical. And I suggest that, this, right, I hear people say that this is a technical conference as opposed to uh, an advocacy conference or a community conference, although I think this, this also builds itself as a community conference. Um, but I suggest to you that any community, if you, go to, uh, if you go to a conference of the American Bar Association, if you go to a conference of uh, libraries associations, if you go to a conference uh, of, uh, geez, knitting, right? People are really very, you know, that, that's no joke, right? Very technical, they, have, they talk shop, um, and, and there, there is a technical language that I think characterizes every community. Uh, and so what I think really, what, what, you, what we often mean, and maybe not always, I'm not saying there's no room for the word technical, but often what we mean is acclimated. And I think if we started to think of it that way, then maybe we'd be a little more inviting. Instead of, instead of thinking, oh, this is a, this is a, a technical talk, uh, that is for technical people, instead saying this is a talk with a great deal of thick material and the people in order to absorb it in a way that is compelling, we probably need an audience that's sufficiently acclimated. Um, some people, uh, are, the, the way that we proceed through dissemination of information uh, reminds me very much of uh, something my sister told me when I asked her, I, I told her I was watching through Star Trek Voyager, uh, which I am and I'm enjoying it, and uh, she said that she was unable to make it through the next generation because she simply didn't have the attention span to, to watch two men talking all the time. Uh, she, just, she, she tried really hard, but something about two men talking to each other, it, it, she had trouble making it through, uh, it, you know, she just couldn't, couldn't keep her attention a lot of the time. Some episodes she liked, but, um, and I think that the, the sort of two men talking phenomenon, I think is the, that's the energy that a lot of our dissemination of information has. Uh, I think also there are a lot of people who are visual people, who have a deep logical sense, a deep sense about what the result of a series of logical expressions will be, and yet the way that they learn and think about things is in, in a visual orientation rather than, uh, rather than in a orientation of, of prose or, um, or e even in Python, although I think that in many cases, you know, we all, I'm sure, know people who uh, are very visual thinkers and who then came to actually love Python, in fact, because it, it has a, you know, it has sort of a paragraph structure, and as we know, it, you know, it aims to be, and, and is, for many of us, very aesthetically compelling. Um, I know that, uh, you know, Steve Holden last year uh, pointed this very problem out and told us that we need more visuals in the doc. He brought up the onion middleware uh, graph, which is a beautiful graph explaining how middleware works. Are there any more visuals in the docs? 
I don't believe there are. If I'm right, there have not been any visuals added to the docs in the last year. And what that says to me is that our community doesn't really care about people who uh, are, are better at learning that way than they are uh, at watching two men talk. That, that's, that's what I hear from that. Uh, the second thing that I think sucks is that uh, the scope of this community is not terribly well defined. Um, so, for example, uh, it seemed like uh, when, when SOPA happened, there was a big thing on the discussion list. Everybody wanted to talk about it. We felt like that, was, that warranted our attention. That was something that affected our community. That was something that struck us where we lived. Uh, it, it didn't belong on the developers list. Okay, fine, I can see that. Uh, we started another list called Django Deeper. Um, we discussed it there. But I, I think, by and large, it's not clear to me exactly what the Django community is and sort of where its, uh, where its borders are. Um, I, you know, I frequently hear, you know, that's that, I frequently hear the phrase, that's not our job, when in reference to people asking that, that things happen uh, in, in Django, whether it's, uh, uh, you know, what, a, a variety of subjects. I don't want to get into any one of them too terribly deeply, but I think if you do a little bit of Googling, you can certainly see both in the IRC logs and on the, on the, the list that there's a whole lot of that. Um, and I think that we need to realize that as a community, we have an enormous responsibility. Uh, we are the creators. Um, in, in some sense, we might even be magicians in, in, a, in a sort of archaic way. We are creators of a tool that's enormously powerful and affects way, way more lives than you think it does. Way, way more lives than you think it does. And so I think that issues of concern are our issues in, in many cases, even if they might not appear to be. Um, the next thing that I think that sucks is, uh, this is a perennial issue, but we gotta go into it, it wouldn't be a complete talk without it, uh, is the question of diversity. Um, how are we doing on the, on the diversity front? Uh, so we know already that the whole room is filled with programmers. We're almost all programmers. So it seems like, how many people, by the way, your main profession, the main thing you do is not programming. You're not first and foremost a programmer. Six, seven, eight hands, eight hands. Okay, um, so 93% or something like that of us in the room, uh, more than that, are, uh, are programmers. So it, it strikes me, and is that, is that what we want? Maybe that's what we want, I don't know. Maybe, maybe it's the case that, hey, this community is about a web framework and you need to be able to program to, to add to the code base of that web framework and this community is about adding to the code base of that web framework and therefore the people who we want are programmers. Maybe that's the story. That hasn't been the perception that I've gotten though. I get the sense that you want more designers, you want more authors, you want more evangelists, you want more um, people who, are, who can play the role of a newcomer, who can provide perspective, the perspective of a newcomer. Um, and yet, uh, here we are, and when we gather together as a community, we find that almost all of us identify as being programmers. Again, my, my hope is that I'm so very excited about the time that we live in. I believe that we are experiencing a renaissance culture and that it's going to grow very, a lot stronger. And I think that many, I know there are many of us that have wear the programmer hat and also wear five or six other hats. But I think we need to really work to make sure that people who are not programmers first and foremost, who maybe have programming as one, one amongst their toolkit, but people who are, have various other modes of civic action are among our ranks in our community. That will make us strong. Um, apart from the professional diversity, obviously we have the social diversity. And this gets talked about all the time and um, I'm gonna spend some time talking about it. Um, I wanna just go through a little bit of the language that I found, and I, I limited myself to three minutes of Googling and clicking to find this language. Um, I found out from looking at documentation of Django packages, and code bases, and fora, and the IRC logs, I found out that comb combinatorial explosion starts to make you its bitch that uh, a, a good way of proceeding through a sprint is bitch and fix, uh, that a, uh, the, the appropriate way to inform someone who's reading your code of what's about to happen when an installation routine is prepared to run is anyway, let's install this bitch, uh, that uh, an appropriate response to a talented SQL programmer who really wants to, uh, wants to use the ORM is to tell them, don't be a pussy, write your own SQL. Uh, and you know, maybe you're saying, oh, you can't say that stuff at DjangoCon. But you said it, it's been said in the code base, it's been said in the forums, is that what, is, is this the language that makes people comfortable, makes people want to join our ranks? 
It also seems that by and large, the, uh, the community, the, the word that we use to describe females in the community, it seems to me from a, from a, you know, a, a cursory look, is, is the word girl, which is the word for a female child. Um, woman is the word for an adult female. Uh, the, in the, the, Python diversity, uh, the, the Python diversity statement reads as follows, and, and I think this is cool. It says, we welcome people of any gender identity or expression, race, ethnicity, size, nationality, sexual orientation, ability level, religion, culture, subculture, and political opinion. Um, in that, I think there, there's two things I'd like to say about that. And I don't think, of course, I don't think that sucks. I don't think anyone can say that that statement sucks. There are two things that I'd like to say about it. One, it strikes me that some of these things are mutable and some are immutable and there's no real distinction made. And I think to the people for whom the quality of discrimination is immutable, that's significant, right? So people can't change, won't change, um, typically, their race, their ethnicity, uh, their size, their nationality. Uh, perhaps their sexual orientation. I think most of us have that view that that's sort of innate. Um, however, ability level, religion, culture, subculture, and political opinion are things that do change. And um, I think that it, it might even be the case that they change as a result of entering our community. I, that, that's, that's, a, that's a possibility. That's something that happens in communities. And so I think that uh, it, it'd be nice to sort of tease those out. Uh, and frankly, if someone was of the political opinion that genocide is great, I'm not sure I'd want them in the, in the community. I'm not sure I'm ready to tolerate absolutely all political opinions. Okay. But w that's, the, that's the weak point in critiquing that. The strong point is, the real point, and the most important thing I'll say about diversity, is that diversity and welcoming are not the same thing. This is a diversity statement, but it doesn't say anything about diversity. What this is talking about is maturity, saying that we are not going to we're not going to harass people on the basis of these various characteristics. And I think that this betrays an enormous underlying conceit. Enormous. Because what was really being said here is that as long as people aren't harassed, they will be, they will be clawing their way through the gates to become part of our community. As long as we can demonstrate that people are not going to be harassed. That's sort of the minimum standard that we need to meet. right? Um, and I, I, that, that'd be a little bit like saying, if we, wanted to, if we wanted to attract people who are victims of war, right? We said we'd really like to, we'd really like to have, cultivate opinions of, of people who have been victims of horrific atrocities. And we said, come to Django Con, there will be no cluster bombing at Django Con. Right? That, I think we'd all realize that that is not what's going to attract someone who has been the victim of a cluster bomb, right? I instead, what we need to do is realize that we have the power. We, as developers of the tools of the information age, have the power to change the balance of privilege. I believe that. I, I think many of us believe that. Uh, and if that's so, then that is an enormous, an enormous welcome mat. If we can go to various underprivileged communities. We can say, um, for example, at uh, New York Public Radio has an absolutely beautiful map of instances of stop and frisk in, uh, in Manhattan and the Bronx. I think it may cover all of New York City. Uh, and it, this is a, I, I mean, it's, it's enormous, enormous sociological significance of, of an issue that's happening right now. Right? So what do we do now? So imagine that someone who is in a neighborhood that is subject to stop and frisk, someone is a person of color, which means they're far, far more likely to be subject to stop and frisk, and they see this map and they, they feel empowered for a moment. They get excited and they're like, this is great. I'd like to do one of these for instances of police brutality. I'd like to do one of these for instances of uh, landlord abuse or something like that. They're, they've never written a line of code in their life, but they, and this is an entirely fictitious scenario, they call up the author and they say, how did you do this? And the author maybe emails them back and says, oh, we did it with Django and this tool and that tool. And they say, oh, Django, that's cool. So Django can, um, Django can help me with, with these issues. Cool. Uh, what, what do we tell that person when they walk in the door? They walk in that back door right there and they say, I'm interested in ending police brutality in the world. And I understand that this thing called Django, along with a few other packages, can make maps. I don't know how to do that. Where, where do I file the ticket? I don't know that we have an answer for that person. I think we'd probably tell them to go to a web shop somewhere or something. I'm not sure what we'd tell them. I don't know. Um, but I think that we need to not only have an answer that, for that person, but also realize that that person's not going to walk through that door. 
not until we go to that community and say, we are developers of a web development framework. We are a community of people who feel passionate about the development of this web development framework. And this is a tool that we think is particularly suited to journalism. It has its roots in journalism and is particularly suited to the, uh, a, a problem that is in, in many ways a problem of access to data, realizing that police brutality is an enormous problem in uh, communities of color around the country, right? I think if we do that, when we do that, uh, take a quarter sheet. You, you, most of you probably live within striking distance of a college campus. Print, get, make a little quarter sheet about Django and about how it, much it excites you and take it to the black student union uh, of uh, your, uh, your local campus. And um, they, you know, they will have people from around the region who are, of course, from communities of color and probably be uh, keenly aware of uh, the problem of police brutality and probably, uh, you know, I, I, I'd like to see what kind of feedback we got if we did that. I'd like to see how much that approach would cha will change uh, the diversity that we have. Uh, the Feminist Majority Leadership Alliance and Social Change for Women, if we go and say, hey, we realize we are living in a rape culture in the world. Maybe you don't want to hear that, but, but it's true, right? Rape is an enormous problem in our culture. What kinds of tools can we build? What kind of data can we provide about the instances of rape on your campus that might inspire you as an opinion leader to get involved. That's the way that you increase diversity. It's great that people won't have their shoulder tattoo licked when they get here. That's, that's like, that, but th that's, that's the minimum standard. That's not what you do to increase diversity, right? That's what, you, that's what you do to remind your membership that a minimum level of maturity is required. Um, another thing that doesn't, that, that I think sucks about Django, uh, there's three, four, four more things. That, that I think sucks about Django is I, I feel like sometimes we don't really defend our image. I say we, I just said we, I usually say you. I'm feeling like I'm more part of the we, which is exciting for me. Um, I think there's still an image out there in the world of the programmer who lives in his parents' basement and has poor hygiene. And I know, you know, I know this is so, somewhat a myth, but this still somewhat exists. And this image is very problematic, not only because of what it suggests about us, but because of what it suggests about our placement in society. And I think it's important that we point out that you know, if you are uh, physically healthy and uh, socially healthy and emotionally healthy and sexually healthy, I think it's important for you to portray that image loudly if you care to, so that people realize, so that that stereotype begins to change. So that we realize that the people, this community and communities like it are communities full of functioning individuals who are really concerned about, uh, you know, uh, about the world and, and, and about being sort of part of a community and about living in a way that is uh, a connected, mature, healthy way. Um, I think that this community is reluctant to express passion. That's another thing that I think sucks. I think there are a lot of passionate people, but I think, I feel like sometimes there's an undercurrent of that we're not supposed to express passion. And my concern about that is that I think that the, the industrial age by and large, right, uh, Steve Holden pointed this out to me yesterday, the industrial age sort of devalued the muscle because now steam machines can do things that ordinarily require muscle. If that's true, then perhaps the information age will do the same thing to repetitive tasks or to logic. If computers can do them easily, then the value of the human brain in performing those techniques becomes devalued. Well, what's left? I suggest to you that a major thing that remains is passion. And I know last year when I fixed the bloody template syntax error wrapping problem at the sprint, I was excited. Not because I ran into that problem, I knew how to circumvent it, but because it was, it was something that I knew bothered newcomers and it really turned me on to fix that. I felt, I felt on top of the world, really passionate about that issue for those few days. And um, I like being surrounded by passionate people and I think often I am, but I'd like for it to be really okay to express that passion. Do I have two minutes before questions? One before questions. I, I'm gonna cut it into your question time a little bit, I'm sorry. Um, <clears throat> I think that another thing that sucks about the Django community, the three more things, one, one is that I feel that we're uh, sometimes uh, hushed about certain topics. Um, I, I don't hear people talking a lot about money, for example, and I think money is an important issue. I'd like for, th this year has been a, a, little, a little bit different. I, I think like the, the presentation on Git tip earlier I think was very helpful. But I think that when newcomers come, there's never a discussion of like, here's a good way to acquire clients, here's a good way to get into some like beginner work, here's a way to sort of climb the ranks and become successful, right? Some of us now are able to bill 
a lot of money. Some of us are, you know, have found ourselves in situations where we're worth a lot. But a lot of times newcomers don't know how to get plugged into that. And we gotta make sure that, hey, they can, they can feed themselves. And if we really believe that a rising tide lifts all boats, if we believe that the more people that are getting hired and getting paid, that that's better for all of us, well then let's show that we believe that. Um, another thing that sometimes we're hushed about is just, uh, I, I, some of us live in certain closets and I think that maybe we're reluctant to emerge from those. Uh, I don't happen to be gay, um, but, but you know, if I were probably as a successful, you know, professional, whatever, someone who, you know, uh, we, 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 we need to be reminded that we have a certain, in addition to the image of living in our parents' basement, we also have an image of being sort of successful and being kind of having that role. And so if, you, if you're playing that role and you also are part of a closet community and you can come out of that closet, you benefit the other people who are part of that closet community. Uh, maybe some are undocumented immigrants. Um, and maybe that it's useful to, to come out of that closet. Uh, maybe some people, like I, find certain prohibited psychoactive substances, marijuana and LSD and psilocybin, uh, find these compelling and, and an important part of what has driven me to find the logically expressive part of my brain that has led me to programming. Maybe coming out of that closet is important. Um, uh, okay, this is the last one. Um, the, the, the last thing that I think sucks about the Django community is that I think it's hard for people to find channels of inspiration. Uh, I'd like to know, and I'm gonna, I am gonna leave a few minutes for people to hopefully come and pledge a bit of action. How many people think of open source as a movement? How many people is it a movement? Oh, that one divided the room. Oh, no, no, it's a little, a little more than half, 65, 70% says my sketchy polling, okay. Um, and maybe movement is an industrial concept, I'm not sure. But uh, I, and I told uh, Andrew Godwin I was gonna blow him up yesterday. He said something to me that inspired me deeply. He said, it, he said this to me and I paused and I just, the time stood still for a moment when he said this, sitting on the couch casually. He described the way that he engages open source. He said, I write code, good things happen. When good things happen, I'm happy. If I'm not happy, I write different code. To me, that sounds like a movement. We are here together writing code and watching good things happen, and when good things happen, we're happy. And if good things don't happen, we change what we do. That sounds to me like a movement. It sounds to me like something that inspires people, and I'd like to, I'd like to make sure that new people who come through the door get a sense of that inspiration, get a sense of how excited we are to be living when we are now, the most exciting time in the history, of, uh, certainly of humanity, um, when, when the, the tools are changing so rapidly and when we have the ability to make so much change in, in such a tight collaboration. I'd like, I'd, like to, I'd like for people, I'd like for that inspiration, the channel of inspiration to be uh, accessible. And you know, I hear uh, there, there's so much pessimism in the world. A lot of people are very unhappy with what our political institutions. I hear some uh, older folks say, where's the movement? Where's the movement that, that existed maybe uh, in the face of the Vietnam War or something? And I will always tell these people, there is an enormous movement. It just doesn't call itself that. But an enormous movement of people who are deeply compelled to entirely reshape the culture. And that's really what technology, and especially the web is, is, it, is it, it's a part, it, it is the culture. And that's what we are reshaping. And if we are a movement, I think we need to play the part of the movement that inspires the body politic, inspires the society. I'd like to see more, I'd like to see that. I think that's, I think that's important. Um, the last thing I'll say is I think, uh, I, I'm hopeful that tonight's event at 6.30 in the theater will be inspirational uh, in that sense. Uh, again, the three keynotes will be speaking uh, in, on a small panel tonight at 6.30. You can get tickets at the registration desk. Um, so it's been a total honor for me to give this talk. I, I've, I've tried my best. Some of my favorite developers in the world are in the room right now, and it's very humbling that you'd have me on the stage to talk to you. That's absolutely incredible. Uh, and uh, most communities don't do this. Most communities don't have a sucks talk. So I think we're already doing something really wonderful. Uh, and um, I'm, I'm just absolutely enormously excited to feel welcome in this community. And um, I'm, I'm really, really happy to be here amongst you all. Thank you very much. Hey, okay, so first off, need to make one thing very clear. Offensive and rude and 
disrespectful language is in no way okay on any official Django forum. If you have a feeling that you have been, if you see something like that, come and talk to us because we will get those people banned if net. We will warn them and we'll get them banned if necessary. I do keep a fairly close eye on, on Django users and a keeping a, a professional tone is something I am very passionate about. I don't spend a lot of time on IRC and if things are happening on IRC like that, come and get me, I will come in there and break heads if I need to because I do not want the community and no one else in the core wants the Django community to become in any way accepting of rude and offensive language. <laughs> to, to bring it round to a question, um, there's an episode of the West Wing, uh, like about season two or thereabouts, where uh, the president gets brought into a room with a person who is pointed out that he's a, a right-wing, redneck Republican versus the very liberal president who's, who's the star of the show. And they have a conversation where, uh, do you know why I don't like you, sir? Yes, because you're a right-wing, redneck, uh, redneck um, hillbilly. Yes, and you know why I don't like you, sir? Yes, because you're a, you're a left-wing, liberal nut job, etc. But we agree on one thing. We agree that campaign finance reform needs to happen. Let's work together on that. Um, your position seems to be that the Django community needs to be about more than working on Django together, working on Django as a software project, that we should be about advocating SOPA or advocating some other political position. I'm almost willing to guarantee if we polled this room, we'd find Republicans, we'd find Democrats, we'd find Greens, we'd find Libertarians, we'd find, you know, great screaming whatever parties. Um, why does Django need to be more than about that community of people coming together and agreeing that this is what we like with the web community, like in a web framework? Inside that community, there may be people who believe in all sorts of things, and it can be a great way of networking and finding other people and see, being exposed to other ideas by hearing that someone's working on a project, and hey, that sounds interesting, and so on and so on. Why does this Django community, at least in terms of the, the, not, the, not the macrocosm, the microcosm of the people who are actually working on Django, need to be about more than working on Django? Uh, there's two, th two things I'd say to that. Uh, one, I think you're right that we need to maintain a big tent, and of course I don't advocate that any actual official entity would take a, a controversial position that would decrease the size of the tent. Uh, I do, though, think that substantial parts of the community um, can, are, who are already connected by our passion for this web framework, I think it's very appropriate for them to connect on that basis and act. Um, that's, that's my first point. And the second is that I think that uh, Right, again, if, if, to the extent that open source is a movement, to the extent that we are about solving a problem, to the extent that every line of code that we commit is about building a feature that changes our reality in some small way, uh, I think it's important to sort of at least, at least think about what are, what, are the, what are the issues that we are working on. And for Django in particular, so that's general to open source, for Django in particular, given that it drives a great deal of the world of journalism, given that it has, I think, more than most web frameworks, the power to expose data that's currently unexposed that can change the balance of power, that can shed light on, uh, on dark corners of, of power. I think that we have sort of a special responsibility to at least make sure that that kind of advocacy is, is possible in our community. Um, you know, and, and again, I, I would never want for people to feel excluded on the basis that their politics are different. I, I, you know, I, I, I hope that we can avoid that. And I do also want to point out that the, the, language, the snippets of language that I found were not all in official Django channels. Some of them were uh, uh, forums related to Django packages, not Django itself, including, I believe, the most controversial one. So I guess, uh, first, I just wanted to say that uh, thank you so much. It's really heartwarming to, to hear someone talking about these kind of issues because it, it does seem to be think something that's, that's almost actively resisted. Um, the, the number of people uh, sort of complaining on the internet about the, the heavy sort of political overtones to the, the opening keynote uh, was quite depressing for me because I completely agree with you that you can't just divorce uh, the real world from the Django community and say, well, we don't have to worry about any of those problems. The not my job line, I think, is, is completely indefensible, as you said. Um, and I guess just following on from, from uh, what Ross just said and uh, sort of p potentially a question is whether you whether you see this as a problem that's at all specific to Django or whether this is just why communities suck or why the open source community sucks. Because 
I feel that Django is is bad on all of the points that that you've you've raised in terms of the the various sort of spectrums of diversity that aren't really being uh, properly represented. Um, but it seems that, that there's an underlying issue, that there's an underlying issue with open source or with technologists or with, with maybe it's just technologists in, in North America or you know, the, the English speaking world. And I guess the, the question is, which, which of the things that you've just talked about do you think are, are specific, specific to Django or, or better or worse in Django than, uh, than other communities that you've been exposed to? My, my sense here is that we're out of time, and, and even if we weren't, I mean, that, so that is a question that was so difficult in sanding down my discussion that I, I really, I, I don't have a good answer to that, and there might not be a good answer to that, and that might be another thing that we need to overcome. Uh, I really am not sure what things are specific to Django. I do know that, you know, obviously, people who come here feel, you know, generally are made to feel very welcome, and, and most, of the, most of the things that I describe, I think, are worse in communities other than Django. Um, but, you know, I, I've got to just dodge that question. I told you at the beginning, I don't have a great sense of it. <laughs> great. Thank you so much, Justin. Uh